Welcome to the next episode of development of the HTube. The overall project will look like this. It will be a large installation, roughly four times four meters with 121 Nixie tubes. And a significant part of this project will be uh, driving electronics. Uh, if we want to make sure that we deliver this project on time, uh, we have to start developing the electronics already. So today in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, about the customer's demands on this project and the specifications and uh, do some thinking about the design of the electronics. Maybe you will have some inputs uh, and these might be valuable for the project. Let's first look at the email from customer with specifications for this project. The wall would measure approximately four times four meters or maybe five times five. So this is this uh, dimension. Uh, this is important because uh, with this size we'll have here tens of meters of cables and because we'll be switching high voltage uh, there might be some interferences happening. Another one, a uh, grid of 11 times 11 Nixie tubes. This means 121 Nixie tubes and seven of them will have extra characters. Now the walls are dark, the space is dark. When the audience enters the space, all the tubes have the number nine. Then it goes down to eight, then seven, six, five, four, three, one, and finally zero. This process from nine to one lasts approximately nine seconds, meaning one second per number, or perhaps two seconds each for a total of 18 seconds. Okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, I think we can make here some slow crossfading uh, through the digits that would look really, really nice. And then the seven tubes at the center of the grid, row six, illuminate with seven Japanese characters going from very low intensity to maximum intensity. This is very important, going from very low intensity to maximum intensity for 15 seconds. This is very, very slow. So our crossfading uh, or fading algorithm must be very smooth uh, so that it's not like flickering or uh, you, you don't you, you can't distinguish between the individual uh, brightness levels once we read zero I want to create a rain effect as if the zeros are raindrops and they start falling down can we do that for example we can have zero only in the top horizontal row and then as it goes off the zero shows up on the row below and on and on as if the zeros are moving down okay so this means like the zeros will be falling like in a free fall uh, that's that's another important parameter which will determine the minimum refresh rate for the for the display let's go straight to the most problematic part and this is the fading if you want to run an Nixie tube at lower brightness uh, you need to do something what is called pulse width modulation. Uh, so you run Nixie tube on for some short period of time and then off for some short per period of time. Uh, let's call this frame. And if you repeat these frames fast enough, like here will be another one and another one then the human eye will see it as a Nixie tube running at lower brightness. Let's say if this is 50% of time and here another 50%, uh, then the tube will glow at 50% brightness for the human eye. Um, okay, so what does it mean for us? Uh, we have uh, 1217 individual characters in the Nixie tubes because we have 121 Nixie tubes each have 10 digits and seven tubes have additional seven characters so so altogether it's 1217 characters to be driven so each of them will be like one bit so we have altogether 1217 bits for the communication uh, we need to send the data here so 1217 bits here, 
then here because it's change and here another change. Uh, the frame, so how, how often do we need to repeat the frames? Uh, at least, at least 100 Hertz. This is the frequency when the human eye no longer sees it flickering, uh, but preferably it would be something like three or 400 Hertz uh, so that we can also use cameras to capture the display and uh, in this case, we would not see it flickering in the camera. Uh, so let's say, but let's stick at the beginning at 100 hertz. So uh, we would need to repeat these frames at 100 hertz. Each frame has uh, two data inputs here and here. So we will need to send each second. We will need to send uh, 1,217 bits times. 100 because this is the refresh rate times 2 so we are at 243,400 bits per second so something like 250 kilobits per second like this is already quite fast for this length of the cabling but doable let's say for smooth fading we need 128 brightness levels so how does this situation change so we will Let's take the lowest brightness level and this would be, look like this. Very short time on and very long time off. So this would be our frame, this. Here it would be on, here it would be off. So the time slot here would have length in time one and the rest of the frame would be 127. What does this mean? Uh, when you look at it, we will need to send the data here and then immediately here. So our frequency will change. It will be, if we want to keep regular frequency, we will need to send the data each of these time slots. So in this case, it will not be times two, but it would be 1,217 times 100. This is the refresh rate times 127. And this is uh, eight, sorry, eight. So in this case is something over 15.5 megahertz. And this is too fast for a serial communication on 60 meters long serial line. So it would not work like this. So we cannot use uh, serial communication as, as we want it. So uh, after a long discussion with Radim, we come up with uh, this kind of solution. We will use RS485 bus. So this would be, here would be a master module and here would be the bus. All the Nixie tubes will have their individual slave modules on them. And as a protocol, we would use DMX512. Uh, this is a standard for control of lighting and effects on stages. So the DMX protocol runs at 250 kilobits per second. This is not enough for us because it allows only 44 Hertz refresh rate. But we can, what we can do, we can integrate the fading effect into the slave module so that the slaves will run the fading at let's say one kilohertz refresh rate, that would be perfect. That would make sure that the display will not flicker for the cameras. And then we would only send the commands like fade in, fade out. And these commands can be sent at much lower frequency. So now let's look if the 44 hertz refresh rate uh, is enough for us. So far, it seems that the fastest movement, uh, what will be happening in the display is during the rain effect. Uh, so let's look closer at this. We have 11 rows of tubes. Uh, and the fastest movement, the fastest change will be probably happening between the last two rows. Uh, if you have the drop here, it falls down, it accelerates and here it has the highest speed. So we need to find the time it takes for the drop to fall from the position from the row 10 to row 11. Uh, we will calculate it from the height of the height of the display. Uh, the display is here from here to here, 3.5 meters. The distance between the rows is 0.35 meters. 
uh, the we, we will do it like this. Uh, let's say here the time the drop needs to travel from the highest row to lowest row will be t1, and the time it needs to travel from here to the tenth row will be t2. So uh, this will be the delta t which we need to calculate. So delta t will be t1 minus t2. Now the formula for calculating the time from the height is square root of two times distance divided by g, like the, the gravitational acceleration coefficient. So uh, in this case it will be delta t equals to square root of 2 d1 minus 2 times d2 g. So we know that the d1 is 3.5 meters, so it's 2 times 3.5 divided by 10. I'm just simplifying it here. 2 times d1. d2 is 15 divided by 10. So the delta t would be... So the delta t is 0.043 seconds. So this is 43 milliseconds. 43 milliseconds, something like this. The 44 hertz refresh rate allows us for something like 22 milliseconds change. So uh, we are able to do uh, update the display twice as fast as we actually need. So the DMX512 should be able to do all the effects we need if we use the uh, crossfading effects on the slaves. If we implement it on the slaves and we use just the DMX protocol to update the display, like to send the commands, like to tell the Nixie tubes, like go up, go down with fading.